Now, here's a story that comes to no surprise to anyone. Keir Starmer revealed his politics by ditching left-wing pledges, Ally says. Key aide Jenny Chapman says Labour leader made a shift to win over voters. I am shocked that Keir Starmer pretended to be left-wing in order to win the membership. We all know this, but this is what Jenny Chapman said in an interview with Politico. In a candid interview with Politico's Westminster Inside podcast, one of Starmer's closest allies reveals the answer. I think what you're seeing now is this real politics, said Jenny Chapman, the former Darlington MP who served as Starmer's political secretary before joining the House of Lords in 2021. There was an understanding in 2020 of the best issues to talk about if you want to become leader of the party. There is permission there to say, this is the kind of country it would be lovely if it could be because you're not actually pitching to the entire country to be the prime minister. This is just basically admitting that Keir Starmer is a dishonest prick. Now, the understanding when he was a Labour leader He never once said, look, I like these policies of the left, the Corbyn economic policies. We can't implement them. We can't go to the electorate because we lost really badly. However, my principles are there. Policies may change. That would be a slightly more on it. I mean, it wouldn't even be honest because Keir Starmer is anti-left. Like he doesn't even support his policies. But there's a revisionism going on here that Jenny Chapman is trying to make it out that Starmer hasn't really lied. And when Keir Starmer's pulled up on this, he says, well, no, I... I never actually pledged these things. I mean, despite them being 10 pledges. So this is completely dishonest. The left-wing economic policies of Jeremy Corbyn aren't just popular with the membership. They're popular with the entire country, even Tory members. When we talk about minimum wage, when we talk about high taxes on the rich, when we talk about public ownership, even Tory voters agree. So it seems really remarkable to me that Keir Starmer has made it his mission to distance himself from those policies. I completely understand if he wanted to just dis- dismiss himself from Jeremy Corbyn as a figure, who, because that's just politics, right? A lot of people don't, unfortunately, uh, connect the person with the policies. So Jeremy Corbyn became incredibly unpopular by 2019. The policies have only increased in popularity. So I wouldn't particularly have a problem with Keir Starmer saying, we're not the last Labour leadership. This is a completely new path, but also retaining the economic policy. But that's not what Keir Starmer believes. Keir Starmer is categorically anti-left, which is why we've seen the sorts of expulsions, the suspensions of left groups, candidates, and of course, um, trying to expel Jeremy Corbyn and barring him as a future candidate. But it's not smart politics because even now the Tories are picking up on this. I mean, they're now starting a campaign that Keir Starmer is the ultimate flip-flopper, and I can't disagree. I mean, I hate the Tories, but they are completely correct when they say Keir Starmer is a liar, because he is, and that's not going to be good for a general election. People want to trust the politicians. Now, I think most people, to a degree, know that they can't entirely trust their politicians, but I don't think they respect or support someone who admits that I am not the same person. And it's not just that he's flip-flopped on the 2020 leadership election pledges, he's flip-flopped this entire time. He said he was going to stop new oil and gas projects, and then within a week, he's flip-flopped on that. When it comes to free school meals, he's flip-flopped on that. There are so many things that he announced himself without the pressure from the left. Within weeks, they've U-turned on it. So when Jenny Chapman says, this is the real Keir Starmer, no one knows what the real Keir Starmer is. And I don't think you even know yourself. Who is the real Keir Starmer? No one knows. The reason why there is no real Keir Starmer is because he has no principle. He has no politics. He just wants power for power's sake. That is all he wants. And it's not even apparent that when he gets into power, he's going to make the necessary changes that we need because he's using Tory lines for policies. When it comes to the economy, he's literally copying almost verbatim Liz Truss's growth for prosperity. He's not talking about redistribution. He's talking about, well, we need to grow the economy to make prosperity for all. That's a neoliberal trickle-down economic argument, something he doesn't need to make. So despite him not particularly having politics of his own, he will always side with the right because generally, if you don't have politics, that means you kind of side with the establishment. In order to be anti-establishment, you need a set of policies or principles. You need to be against the status quo. And if you're not against the status quo without having a particular set of politics, then inevitably you side with the establishment, which is the Labour right. It's why he's expelling the left. It's why he's expelling centre-left 
uh, members such as Neil Lawson, who was the chief of Compass, um, because he wants the party to be a right-wing clique, and that they're those who should be in power, according to him. Now, Chapman continues to say, the essay question is very different when you're asking to be leader of a movement to asking to be prime minister of an entire country, which has people with much, much more diverse needs than half a million Labour Party members. Well, first of all, not half a million members anymore. It's, they've lost like 300,000 members. It's like 200,000. So already, Keir Starmer's leadership has made the Labour Party less diverse and less reflective of the country because the party is smaller. Secondly, it misunderstands that just because you join a political party, of course, you may have different political views from other people. Um, uh, if you're a member of the Tory party, you could have very different views than being a member of the Labour Party. But what is true that most people are in the same material conditions. There's a cost of living crisis. Rents are high. Mortgages are skyrocketing. Things are becoming more and more expensive and they want politicians to do something about it. So actually, funny enough, Corbyn's economic policy, which is always described as a hard left clique, which is out of touch with the country, is more representative of the entire country. Labour members, their views and policies are more representative of the entire country. Keir Starmer's policies, well, there is a lack of policy, but some policies he's announced are more of a hard right clique because they don't represent the nation. You can be a working class Tory because that's how the Tories win power. You can be working class, and I think you're voting against your interests, but it's still true that working class people vote Tory. So I would say a good way to convert them or to bring them to your side to say, it's just the same as someone who considers themselves to be on the left or a Labour member. Your material conditions are the same. You're still renting. You have a mortgage. So there are these broad economic ideas and policies that come from the left are very much in touch with the broader electorate. The Labour right always love to pit the Labour membership against the rest of the electorate. It's like they hate their own membership. They hate their own base. But that's just not true, as I've just outlined. I'm pretty sure, I haven't looked at the statistics on this, but either a plurality or a majority of people support proportional representation or a far more democratic voting system. That's something the Labour membership passed at conference in which Keir Starmer was ignoring, but that benefits everyone. So it's not about ditching left-wing policies. It's about effectively communicating it. The problem with Corbyn is it was very difficult to do that because most of his leadership was marred in, in crisis. Crisis from the mainstream media because they attacked him all the time. Crisis from within the Labour Party because we know the Labour right were trying to destroy Jeremy Corbyn. So it was hard to communicate that message. But in 2017, when there was a brief period in time where the, uh, the, the critics of Corbyn or the saboteurs shut up for one second, wow, the Labour Party got a hung parliament because they coalesced around a coherent message. That's something that Keir Starmer should do. He won't do it, not because he thinks it's a bad strategy, but because he hates the left.